Hey everyone, it's James again with TFB TV, and today I've got the Galil Ace in 223 or 556. This is the newer version of the IWI Galil Ace that has been out since 2015 in 76239. This one came out in 2017 and it shoots 556 or 223. Really neat. It also takes Stainag or AR15 magazines. So, what's the big deal with the Galil? Do you like that little poem? If you're looking at a cross between the AK-47 and the AR-15, again, I've said it before in other videos, you've got AR-15 guys, you've got AK guys, but sometimes you have both. I'm a little of both. I like how robust the AK-47 is. I like the long stroke piston operating system that's inherently reliable, but I also like the accuracy of the AR-15. I like 223, very mild and relatively flat shooting. I like the fact that it uses Stainag magazines. I like how easy it is to get parts and accessories for it. And I like how modular it is as opposed to the AK-47, which is not a very modular platform. So the Galil is great because you're really getting the best of both worlds. Now, of course, it's got its own shortcomings, which we'll talk about later. But before we get there, why don't we talk about the history of the Galil? The Galil Galil was invented in Israel. Some of you may have heard about the Six Day War in the late 60s in the Middle East. And in that conflict, the Israeli military, they were using Belgian FALs. And while the FAL, and I love the FAL, by the way, as a platform, well, rumor has it, the lore is that the Belgian FAL did not perform well in the arid, dry, dusty Middle East. And I think that's why you see a lot of Israeli surplus parts kits for the FALs that have the sand cuts in the bolt carrier. The 762 bolt carrier has the zigzag sand cuts in it, uh, allegedly to help sand get out of the system. So the Israelis discovered that the FAL that they were using wasn't necessarily ideal for desert warfare. And moreover, you're looking at a gun that in the configuration they were using weighed 10 pounds and you use 20 round magazines of 308, which is significantly heavier than say 5.56 and heavier than 7.62.39. So you had lower capacity and heavier rounds. So what ended up happening in the late 60s is the Galil was invented by IMI or Israeli Military Industries. And the Galil was designed specifically for desert warfare. Basically, it adopted a lot of the elements of the AK-47, not the least of which is the long stroke piston system with the rotating bolt, which tends to lead to higher reliability. Now, there are a lot of people that will contest that point, but I don't think there is a lot of dispute that the AK-47 may be the most reliable platform on the planet. But that said, it's also not exactly that accurate or lightweight and quality control can be a little shoddy. So while the Israelis did in fact base the Galil on the AK, which is again apparent from its operating system, it was a little bit higher quality. All in all, it was a big win for the Israelis. Now, while the Galil is adored by its fan base and enjoys a reputation for reliability and pretty decent accuracy, first of all, they're really hard to get in the United States. But more importantly, just like the AK-47, the design started to get a little dated. If it doesn't have full length Picatinny rail on it, if it doesn't have an easy way to mount optics and accessories, if it doesn't have modern machining, then it's kind of fallen in the wayside. And you've seen a lot of countries recently, most notably Russia, essentially revamping the AK platform that they've been using since like the 50s or the 60s, revamping it to bring it into the modern age. And that's what's happened with the Galil Ace. And while we'll go over the new features of the Galil in depth in just a moment. Something that you need to keep in mind is really this is a third generation combat rifle. You're looking at the AK-47 from the 40s and 50s, and then an improvement upon that with the Galil in the 60s and 70s. And now you're looking at a true 21st century combat rifle that's been employed by police forces, militaries around the globe. And this thing is pretty much combat ready out of the box, but we'll go over that in just a second. In any event, I'm really excited to bring this review to you. Let's go over the specs and then I'll hit the range with it. The Galil Ace comes with a tri-rail for mounting accessories at three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. And it has these really nice covers 
on here, these rail covers, but they're a little girthy for me, if you know what I mean. It's like, really, you got to get a, a handful on those rail covers, but it's not that big of a deal because they're very easily removable and it exposes the pick rail underneath. And you can add ladder covers or slimmer rail covers if you'd like. You're looking at a threaded barrel. This is a 16 inch barrel, cold hammer forged, one in seven twist. And that's great because cold hammer forged barrels, like what comes on most AKs, tend to be more accurate and more durable than your run of the mill barrel. Standard A2 flash hider, you can see the gas block right here, gas tube up top. What's also a huge plus about this gun is it comes with factory night sights. You can see the tritium insert for the sights right there. Peep sights are also great, similar to the AR. You've got a wide and a narrow aperture. Again, this thing is combat ready out of the box. You can see the full 14 inches of Picatinny rail along the top reciprocating charging handle, which means it moves when it fires. Now here's something that I didn't really know what it was when I first saw it. You guys see this? This is a spring loaded dust cover. It's to keep dirt, sand, dust out of your receiver. How ingenious is that? So you can see when you cycle the rifle, the charging handle and the bolt move the little dust cover out of the way but when you're not firing, it prevents dust, sand, whatever from getting inside your receiver. That's brilliant. Another nice thing about the Ace, fully ambidextrous. So you can see we're looking at the left-hand side of the gun, mag release there, and right side of the gun, mag release there. Same mag release. Left side of the gun, charging handle. Right side of the gun, right here you got a bolt release that you can press down. Safety, same thing, swipe down, to fire on the right hand side of the gun if you're a lefty or if you're a righty then you can just use your thumb and this is the uh, it, when you see this style of safety in an AK they refer to it as a Galil style safety. I much prefer the lever on the left hand side of the gun here because of how tight the tolerances are in this gun it's a lot easier to use that than the swipe safety but I'm sure after some use and wear and tear this one's going to ease up a little bit. So with the original Galil, you're looking at a steel gun that weighed about eight and a half pounds. With this Galil, you're looking at a gun that weighs about seven and a half pounds. And yes, it's got some steel parts, it's got some aluminum components, and it's got some polymer components. Now, a lot of detractors don't like this polymer, what you might call a lower receiver, but it's really not a lower receiver. The entire fire control group is housed in the steel upper receiver. This piece of plastic at the bottom is just the pistol grip, the trigger guard, and the magwell. I like the folding stock in this Galil a lot. It's not exactly easy to fold the gun back up, but that's not really what you're concerned with, right? You wanna be able to deploy the stock quickly, and that's easy, no buttons, no nothing. And whenever you fold it back, it locks into place affirmatively. It's not just flopping around. It's got a six position AR style stock, although it doesn't take AR stocks. It's not compatible with AR stocks. It's proprietary, but it's an AR style stock. It also comes with a comb riser. You can see you can mount it in one of two positions. And this is if you're using an optic, it makes it easier to shoot. I'll be putting this on when I do some precision groups a little bit later. Disassembly is virtually identical to the AK. You press this little button in the back through the cutout in the receiver. The receiver cover comes off. It's got rubber sealing right here to prevent gunk or what have you from getting into the receiver. There's your recoil assembly. There's your long stroke piston system, as you can see as opposed to a short stroke that has a separate gas piston from the bolt carrier group. This one's got a piston which is attached to the bolt carrier group. There's your rotating bolt right there, charging handle. Now here's one thing that's really cool about the Galil. This is the gas tube. It is, as you see, dovetailed into the receiver. So it remains fairly independent of the receiver, which is going to reduce the effect of harmonics, of negative harmonics from the movement of the gas piston inside of the gas tube because it's basically, it's a separate component. You've also got a rubber recoil buffer here at the back of the recoil spring where the bolt makes contact 
So if you're a righty, what's nice is you can either charge from the left-hand side, unlike with the AK using the charging handle, or you can press down on the bolt release right here. So it's great because unlike the AK, you can maintain your firing grip with your primary hand and still charge the rifle. So I've noticed with PMAGs, I guess because you're talking about a plastic mag well and a plastic magazine, they're a little bit resistant to, uh, to jump out of the mag well. That's not a big deal. Just use your aluminum Stanag magazines, you'll be just fine. And I mean, really, I, I can't imagine it's that big of a deal to use the polymer mags if you really want to. Now, something I neglected to mention at the introduction of this video, this gun comes with a two-stage trigger. Now, it isn't anything like a two-stage, like a national match trigger or anything when you think of an AR-15, but it's about a seven-pound trigger, and you've got a little bit of take-up, and then a nice, smooth break. So, is it a match-grade trigger? No. But is it far better than the single-stage GI trigger you're gonna get in like 99% of all AR-15s? Absolutely. So that's a nice little bonus that you get with the Galil over the AR-15. You're going to have a little bit more recoil with the Galil versus the AR, and that's by virtue of the fact that you've got a lot more reciprocating mass moving every time you fire it. Remember, you've got, you saw earlier, that gas piston and the bolt carrier, the bolt, all moving rearward every time you fire, as opposed to the AR-15, which just has the gas tube propelling gas back into a very small, light bolt and bolt carrier group. So uh, there, there's substantially more recoil on the Galil than with the AR-15, but again, you have to remember the trade-off here. The trade-off is more supposed reliability. And right now, the bolt carrier, I've just fired about 100 rounds through it, and the bolt carrier, I can, I can touch it. You know, of course, the, the barrel's blazing hot. Again, that's the nice thing about the gas piston operating system is that the piston is taking all the heat, all the fouling. With the AR-15, of course, it's all going directly into the chamber. So fit and finish wise, I think this is one of the nicest combat rifles that I've handled. I mean, this is probably right up there with the SIG 550 series. I mean, this is a very well put together machine everything fits together. The tolerances are really tight, which tends to lend itself to poor reliability, but as we know, that's not necessarily the case with the Galil Ace. The ergonomics have been fantastic. The mag release is very easy to reach on either side. I still like the bolt release being where it is on the AR-15, but I'm just used to that. It's still pretty easy and pretty intuitive to knock this charging handle if you're a righty, or if you even want to, you can press down on that bolt release. This gun's about half a pound heavier than, say, a Colt 6920, like a comparable M4 AR-15. It also costs about 500 bucks more than street price than a premium comparable AR-15. All right, gang, I got some Ventura Munitions 77 grain Nosler. This is a heavier, probably one of the heaviest rounds that you can push through a 5.56, 223 rifle. But this Galil's got a pretty fast twist on it of one in seven, so it should be able to stabilize. We're here at 100 yards. Let's see what kind of groups we can put up with this stuff. I also have Ventura Munitions 55 grain, just regular range ammunition. Nothing special other than the fact it's made with care and love by Ventura Munitions. I'm gonna shoot some groups with it and see how it does. Yep, looks good to me. All right, gang, you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five. Our best group with the 77 grain is pretty much spot on at exactly two inches. One, two, three, four, five of the 55 grain. You're looking at 2.5 inches. So with the regular range ammo, Ventura range ammo, 55 grain, two and a half inches, two inches with the 77 grain, for an AK type rifle, that's pretty good. So how do I feel about the Galil? Well, the Galil is for real. Another awesome poem for you guys. 
Um, seriously, I'm going to keep this concise because I know this was a long, in-depth video. I always try to find something positive to say about everything I review, and I always try to find something negative to say about every gun I review. As you guys know, we don't charge for reviews here, so everything that we do is unbiased. Now, there's a lot of good things to say about the Galil. As I said, I think maybe its biggest selling point is the fit and finish is fantastic, and the design. Remember, you're looking at somewhat of a blend of an AK and an M4 or an AR-15. My only negatives, number one, it kind of feels like they could have put an AR buffer tube on the back so you could put an AR-15 stock. You would have a ton of stocks available. I don't know why they didn't do that. Now, some of you are going to want me to say the price because I think you're looking at like $1,500 to $1,700 street for this gun. But bear in mind, if you were to buy a premium AR-15, like say a Colt 6920, you're looking at around $1,000. And it's going to come as a stock configured M4 right out of the box. So this one already comes equipped with rails. You've got night sights. You've got a folding stock on there. And these are things that would cost a lot more money. It's fully ambi also, think about that. And if you tried to do that with an AR-15, next thing you know, if you're using a premium AR, you're in $1,500 to $1,700. So it sounds expensive, but I think when you look at the dollars and cents, you're getting something that again is battle ready, right? One other negative, I think the most significant negative for me was the fact that the Galil definitely has more recoil than the AR-15, but again, that's part and parcel of the design. You're looking at a long stroke piston, there's a lot of reciprocating mass every time you shoot it, so you're going to just have more recoil, and hopefully what you're getting in exchange is increased reliability and durability. So, take it or leave it, but in any event, Fantastic. This is one of the best rifles uh, that I think I've reviewed for TFB TV in the like almost four years of doing TFB TV. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you, of course, to our sponsor, Ventura Munitions. And we've got a new sponsor, Blue Alpha Gear. They're sponsoring the program. And if you go to Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash TFB TV, it's down in the description. If you go to Patreon, you'll see that Blue Alpha is giving away two belts a month to any of our Patreon supporters. So we're going to be doing this drawing every month until, I don't know when, whenever we just decide to stop. Blue Alpha gear, they make the absolute best gear out there. So make sure to check them out. In any event, thanks again, guys. See you next week.